How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling in this most interesting time in the history of professional wrestling. We're going, of course, uh, in a couple of, uh, about half an hour, we're going to have Jerry the King Lawler up. We've got Brian Alvarez here for the whole two hours. And, uh, Brian, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing good. You're doing good? Yep. I'm barely surviving. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> how late were you up last night? Actually, I was only up to about 2.30, but uh, I ended up getting up a lot earlier than I expected this morning, so it didn't exactly balance out. Oh, I, I, uh, I, I was so glad when this issue was over. It's, it's, it's a good issue. In fact, actually, from a news standpoint, um, there's more information in this issue than probably any issue all year. Um, you know, a lot more than even last week. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, when I read over the issue when I woke up this morning, I was, I was real happy with it. Not necessarily the writing of it, but as about as good as I'm going to do. But um, I was just so glad it was over. It was just too big of a story. You know, Two weeks in a row. That you had to write at the last minute because, you know, Monday night was, you know, was so much of the story. You know, what yeah. were you going to do on Monday night? And then the other thing with, with, with the big story was is that, I mean, there's so many unanswered questions. You know what I mean? So, so, you know, you're trying to get answers, you know, all night long. And most, you know, and nobody really knows the answers yet because there are no answers. Yeah. And then, you know, there's SmackDown last night and Shawn Michaels disappearing and all that. Anyway, I think the first thing we'll talk about is before we get to the SmackDown results is uh, this is the situation with Shawn Michaels. Um, he was scheduled to be, he was originally scheduled to be on Nitro, I mean Nitro, on Raw on Monday. And he was pulled from Raw just because there was so much going on on the show, and they would it be angry he was going to do. They moved it to SmackDown. Now he was pulled through SmackDown not over time constraints, but because whatever it is, and I don't know what it was that he was supposed to do, but whatever it was, um, they didn't think he would be able to pull it off, and he was very unhappy and he left. I don't know what that means as far as you know he was supposed to be at WrestleMania. I don't know that he won't be at WrestleMania. I don't know that he will. Uh, we'll try to find out in the next couple of days what all that means. So, anyway. They didn't know now? if he could pull it off. Yes. They did not think they should put him on the air. Okay. That was kind of the story I heard, but the way you uh, explained it sounded a little bit different. <laughs> well, anyway, that's the deal. Well, there you go. Uh, let's go to uh, some SmackDown stuff. Uh, let me see where we go. Uh, it opened with um, uh, Triple H cutting a promo on The Undertaker. The Undertaker came out, ran down, went to attack him, and The Undertaker was again arrested. Presumably by real cops this time. This time they were real cops, yeah. They had some backstage stuff where uh, William Regal warned uh, Rock Austin and Deborah that they have to stay in their dressing rooms and they must not do anything to endanger the main event, which, of course, means that they're coming out uh, later in the show. X-Pac and Just Incredible over the APA uh, when the RTC interfered. Taz tried to make the save, but he got laid out as well. So, of course, that puts some heat on the sixth man for WrestleMania, Taz and the APA against the RTC. Um, with Taz injured, Paul Heyman came out for commentary. So, commentary is probably going to be a lot better this week. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Shane McMahon showed up. And they would show him backstage talking to different people, Billy Gunn, the Hardys, and Chris Jericho. <laughs> oh, Billy Gunn, good. Billy Gunn, yeah. So um, that's all they did with Shane McMahon. And he had his license plate that said WCW1. So I guess Shane has got a new license plate in record time. And Vince got all mad at, at uh, the idea that he was looking to steal talent. And uh, Vince went to Chris Jericho and reminded him that he had a ironclad contract and he could not jump. So that's... I don't know. What he, I guess he didn't remind Billy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably uh, looking over Billy Gunn's contract, going, "I wonder if I can get rid of this guy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe maybe I can send him down there. That would be good out. revenge on his son. Yeah. Look, Shane, I got a guy for you. It's Billy Gunn. Yeah. Uh, Shane never appeared before the live crowd. By the way, they did have a sellout last night at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Benoit and Test beat Kurt Angle and Eddie Guerrero when uh, Benoit put the cross face on Eddie Guerrero. Then after the match. Kurt Angle put the ankle lock on Benoit, and Benoit did tap. So that's, that's, that's Paul Heyman stuff. I mean, no one's told me that, but I know it. Because, you know, you know, the whole thing that, that, that they're doing with this, and it, it's, it's real smart, is that they're getting the submissions over. And the, yeah. and the top guys are tapping when they're locked in a submission, which makes the submissions that much stronger. Very good. I mean, I think that it's really good. And it doesn't make it such a big deal when someone does tap out. Yeah, because other I mean, they used to make it. such a big deal out of it, like... Oh, my God, this guy will never tap out. So you thought, oh, if he does tap out, what a wimp. I used to hate 
whether it was Wahina well, used to do that a lot, Monsoon used to do that. When a guy would get like a submission hold on and they go, You will never see this man tap and I go, Then why did that wrestler just waste his time putting that submission hold on? Yeah. You know. I mean I mean it takes away plus the other thing is in a real life the wrestlers, you know, putting the submissions on, even though those submissions actually in real life uh, would would break, you know, not necessarily break bones, but tear ligaments and stuff. But the submissions are actually far more dangerous than anything if they were used for real. But being that it's pro wrestling, they're not. Mm -hmm. So because of that, the submissions are actually easier on your body than the big bumps that set up the pinfalls. So if you could do a match, and they do this in Japan all the time. I mean, Mudo's doing it now. And, and I mean, Mudo's over there having good matches, believe it or not, where, where he just does mat work and they go from submission to submission. And he doesn't have to take bumps. He's not doing moonsaults anymore. And he can still be effective. And it's not as hard on his body. Mm -hmm. And so if you can get the submission, you know, of course, the, the, the best style is a guy who still can physically take the bumps and do the, the flying moves and do the submissions. But, I mean, the submissions add something in between the big bumps and the high-flying moves. Another thing that, that hopefully if they're over, you know, can, you know, transition the match, so to speak, or work the match. And also... Uh, knowing that you're building to a submission makes the working the body part so much more effective because you know, people it, believe if you put that submission on it might work. Right, exactly. I mean, from a psychology standpoint. Anyway, uh, Steve Austin comes out and calls out The Rock, but Vince McMahon comes out and says that there's no way that uh, The Rock's coming out, which of course means he's coming out, uh, because it will never let that WrestleMania main event be in jeopardy. By the way, Brian, you know that the WrestleMania is 39.95. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. We never really talked about it. I don't know if that really makes a difference other than I think he guarantees it's going to be the biggest money wrestling show of all. Well, I shouldn't say that because last year they had the forty nine ninety five price. So it, it Yeah, but last year you had the option to uh, pay less. This year you right, don't. Right, right. Yeah, but last year was thirty four. So, it, but to the point, it may not be the biggest money. It'll be one of the. You know, it's going to be one of the two biggest if it's not the biggest Sunday show. Uh, let's see. So anyway, uh, Rock ends up coming out. Um, they end up throwing beer on each other. They start fighting, and it was just a pull apart with a bunch of referees and stuff like that. And they were taken away by the police into separate dressing rooms, never to be seen again for the rest of the night. Uh, Rhino beat Matt Hardy when Christian interfered, but after the match, uh, the Dudleys came out, and, uh, and it ended up with the Dudleys edging Christian and the Hardys out there fighting with ladders and tables to build up the match on Sunday. And uh, Rhino took a 3D through the table. I tell you, you know, that mania show, you know, there's going to be, okay. Rock and Austin will probably be a four-star match. Maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more. Benoit and Angle, I would bet that they'll do right at four stars, if not more. The tables, ladders, and chairs will probably be a four-star match. It's going to be a hell of a show. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then, uh, with Undertaker arrested... China and Ivory? Well, no, it's not going to be like the greatest show of all time. I'm just saying that there's going to be... <laughs> and the, the gimmick Battle Royal, there's, there'll, be, there'll be some bad wrestling, too. Oh, boy. Um... Anyway, uh, Triple H came out to the Undertaker's music on the Undertaker's motorcycle, being the Undertaker was arrested, and then started smashing it with a sledgehammer and uh, knocked it off the stage, which I heard does not come off as good as it sounds, uh, because he had trouble moving that big motorcycle, and when it went off the stage, it didn't make a big crash. I wonder if they're going to show uh, 15 replays like they did that time that uh, Undertaker threw a Kurt Angle scooter off the stage. <laughs> Remember that? They showed like 15 replays like this thing took a bump. Yeah. Uh, then Vince is in a bad mood over what Shane did, so he's cheering up. So he books Trish against Ivory in a bra and panties match. It ends up with Ivory uh, pulling Trish's shirt off and then realizing what she's done, tries to put it back on. And Ivory doesn't, I mean, uh, and, uh, not what's not, um, um, Trish Trance doesn't want it back on. Uh, and then and, and it ends up with uh, China tearing the clothes off of Ivory, who's wearing those big granny panties, so everyone gets to laugh. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, Regal cuts a promo. And anyway, the main event is Regal and the Big Show against Kane and Jericho, which is quite the main event for the final show before WrestleMania. And Raven hits uh, Jericho with a... Uh, no, Ra Raven distracts Jericho. Ra Regal hits him with a fire extinguisher and makes him submit to the Regal stretch, which is his new finisher. And uh, that, was, that was actually the end of SmackDown right there. I mean, the Undertaker ended up coming back out after the show was over, and him and Kane beat everybody up, including Triple H, uh, who came back. You know. And uh, anyway, that was the show. We didn't talk about the greatest news on the entire show. What was that? Vince McMahon telling Deborah her services were no longer needed. Oh, I know. Yeah. Anyway. That's fabulous news. She's out of the main event. Yep. That's, that is. That is. 
Now, what do we have here? We've got a poll question. Uh, see, this is for yesterday. Very different results for the Monday night poll question. For the last Monday night poll question, by the way, of all time, uh, what did you think of Monday night's wrestling? Raw was better 40%. Nitro was better 49%, which tells you that 89% of the people watch both shows, which is entirely different than most weeks. <laughs> didn't watch Raw 1%, didn't watch Nitro 5%, didn't watch either show 5%. Today's question is, uh, who would you hire as the lead announcer for WCW? A, Tony Schiavone. I only got five picks. B, Scott Hudson. C, Mike Tanay. D, Kevin Kelly. E, Michael Cole. Did I leave out somebody good? Probably a lot of people good. Mauro Ranallo. Did you have anybody good? Mauro Ranallo. You know who that is? Who? Mauro Ranallo. You don't know who that is? No. He's the uh, announcer for Matt Rats. That's my pick. And I'm not being facetious. He's awesome. Huh. He's, seriously, this guy, it's like, except for Ross, he's the best announcer out there. Great. No one knows him. Except stuck up in Calgary. He, I mean, he did the announcer for Stampede, too. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's, he just showed up for Matt Rats. Really funny. Knows every move. Gets guys over. I mean, he, just really, really good. Anyway, any, any more news? Uh, the meeting today at the uh, power plant. Yes. Basically, everybody was fired. Actually, I don't know if fired is the right word. Laid off, which... Um, some of the guys are going to be kept on for 30 days for a transition period, but basically, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what happened. Um, so pretty much what everybody expected, and they were told they yeah. could apply to the WWF, and I'm sure most of them will at least try, but who knows. And they were reading a list of people who have severance packages coming, and one of the names listed was Vince Russo. Hmm. That was kind of interesting. Uh, we'll have more on the meeting later on the website, because um, I didn't really get a chance to. I, I talked to someone, like, very briefly, but I, just because I did a radio show right before this one, I didn't have a chance to go in-depth on that. Uh, so Russo was one of those 24 contracts that they picked up? <laughs> no. No. Um, by the way, that was that was hilarious. Fig I, you know, because of the delay and everything, I didn't get figure four until yesterday. That was, that was a really good issue. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll tell you how to get Observer on Figure 4 later in the show, if you're interested. Um, I'm sure, you, I, I mean, I would presume that these would be, this week's would be real kind of collector's issues, because it's, last two weeks were kind of like two of the newsier weeks of our lifetimes. Uh, let me see, what do we have here? Do you hope that absolutely nothing happens this week? Well, we got WrestleMania, so it's right there. And, um, I mean, the one good thing, too, is, um, that, uh, I got tons of letters. I mean, great letters to catch up on. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no problem. You know, this, this, I almost thought this was like the storm before the calm, to paraphrase a, an old saying, because, I, I mean, what, what these last two weeks, as I was writing, and I mean, this is like some of the hardest work I've done in a long time, and I'm really sick, too, is, I, I mean, I kept thinking this is like last night when I was writing, you know, after Tuesday night is over, it's all downhill from here. I mean, as far as there's no more WCW. I mean, like, it's, it'll be under the WF banner, but it's, it's WWF. I mean, there's no more WCW. It's just, um, I mean, it's, it, there's going to be less television. I mean, it's just not going to be as hard. I mean, it may not be as interesting, but it's just not going to be as hard. I mean, and there's never going to be, I mean, well, no one's going to buy Vince in the next year. So there's never going to be another story like this anytime soon. I mean, there's, I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of bad. I mean, like, subscriptions are, like, going through the roof because of the big story. And now I'm thinking, like, you know, but there's, you know, there's no follow-up. I mean, once... You know, I guess there's a couple weeks on who's going to be retained and who's not, but, I mean, there can't be any news this big. I mean, I mean there hasn't been... It won't be this big, but I think once they start the show, there will be a lot to talk about. Yeah, the show better be awesome. I, mean, I, I think everyone pretty much agrees on that one. If that show is anything less than awesome, it's going to die. Because I think for eight weeks, it'll be kind of slow until they start it up, because what really is there? Even so, and then plus it's a post route in Port Well, we got one company to cover. Yeah. In this country. How would you think about tonight? There's no thunder. That's that's fine. Believe me. I, I, I would just take a nap, you know. I mean, I need the nap. But, um, no, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at it like, you know, I, I start thinking about it in a good way. I mean, I'm going to start watching the Tuesday night wrestling on Galavision every week, which I will enjoy. Um, although I watched some of the AAA while I was eating dinner last night, and I didn't really enjoy it that much. So maybe I would. Production. What? The production. What about it? That's kind of what got me. It's like, it's almost like the thunder. It's just so dark. Yeah. I, I just... You watch the MLL, it's all well lit and, you know, all happy music, and then all of a sudden there's dark AAA. 
Yeah. Plus, also, it's just... I don't garbage know, wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, it's so much garbage wrestling. Um, so, I'll get to watch more Japan, which is cool. I started, I started watching some of that this afternoon. I saw some stuff with um, Don Fry and Yuji Nagata. I mean, like, they were in a tag match with Don Fry and Robbie Rage against Yuji Nagata and Katsuki Sasaki. It was, like, awesome mat wrestling. Like, it was like, it was like, you know, I'm watching it going, like, you know, I never think of Don Fry as a good worker. Uh, but in these sequences, he's phenomenal. Or, or Yuji Nagata is just that good, which, in fact, he is. Uh, so what else? Anything else? Uh, I don't else? think so. Okay, so Mike, Mike Parker, who goes, if TV for WCW is six to eight weeks away, what will they do to keep it fresh in viewers' minds? Well, they'll do teasers on Raw and SmackDown. They have to, obviously. Can we assume there will be some WCW talent seen on WFTV? I don't know. I mean, based on what I was told, no. I think it may just be Shane. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, I think there should be, just to, to, to build up. Certainly the last two weeks before the new show debuts, they've got to expose it, so I would think, it's all working. Maybe have somebody in the crowd with one of those signs. Remember they did that with uh, ECW? Yeah. Nobody will ever forget that uh, Sabu Fears Taz sign. Mm -hmm. Do something like that. Yeah. The, you can't really uh, have WCW guys just come out on TV and cut a promo when making Oh, no, 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 but they have to do some teases and things like that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you know when, when we talk about that, that phrase, work, this is all work in progress? Mm hmm uh, I scared myself with that one because remember what the last work in progress was? The XFL. <laughs> I mean, when that yeah, but like, in, in hindsight, I mean, they will be the first ones to admit that they started that thing and they were not ready. Yeah, but he was jumping into something completely different. But this is different waters, too? I mean, you're, you're It's right. different waters, but at least it's the same industry. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's their industry where, they're, where it's their field of expertise as opposed to a whole new field. But it's it's 11, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Saturday night on CNN. I mean, that's they're starting out with one strike against them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Anyway, I would think this would have to keep the Shane versus Vince angle going beyond WrestleMania. Well, they, obviously Shane and Vince can't do a blow off. That's not, I don't think you know. Obviously not. Um, okay, let me see. Minus every big name from uh, except for Booker T. Uh, likely not being part of the new WCW. The only way I can foresee the McMahon successfully building WCW in an equal is to divide both rosters and have a mix and match. Well, I think they got it. And I think they know that they got to send guys over. And they will. And I think that Vince even told guys, you know, that he's got to send guys over. So that's so just a question of it. You know, I really, when I start thinking about it, um, I think The Rock's the guy they should send. Mm -hmm. um, even more than Hunter. Hunter's a better worker than The Rock. But the thing is, is uh, Rock is not working house shows anyway. So you're not losing them there. And WWF, you know, WWF can survive with Austin and Hunter and without Rock on Monday and Thursday. And Rock is one guy who is so strong that if people think their only chance to watch The Rock is on Saturday night, they may go out of their way to do that. Whereas Hunter, people will not go out of their way to see a bunch of nobodies in Hunter. But they will go out of their way to see Rock, and maybe Rock can elevate those guys. Also, the other thing is, is Rock elevates guys better than Hunter. Yeah, yeah, no problem putting anybody over. Yeah, Rock goes in there and puts people over. Rock can make stars. So and the other thing is, you know, this isn't going to be his last movie project. No. By no. any means, and there's going to be, uh, I'm sure. I don't know, you know, if he's got anything like scheduled for the summer, or winter, or anything like that. But there's going to be a time when he's gone all the time, and this is perfect schedule. Yeah, but. The thing is, if uh, if by then they have uh, enough of this stuff built up, I just hope they don't send like the Big Show and Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn. Yeah. Uh, see, don't you think it was sad that Ric Flair's last night show match was in front of a bunch of drunk college kids in Florida rather than in Charlotte? Um, At least they were alive. I, I I didn't have a problem with that. I don't. I mean, um, I would love, and it won't. I don't think it'll happen. But I think it would be really good for the WF to do a Ric Flair retirement tour, you know, and, and, and maybe, but I don't, I don't know that he needs to wrestle every night on it. Maybe uh -huh. Ric Flair Flair farewell appearances. Something, he deserves it, but I don't know. Nobody believes in retirements anyway, and Ric Flair just, how many times has Ric Flair done retirement stipulations? So, it's kind of like to me, you know, when Ric Flair did that thing with Hogan in, what year was it, in 94, when he retired? After that, it was kind of like, in my opinion, and I, you know, everyone knows I like Ric, in my mind, it was like, okay, Rick, you know, you screwed yourself of, of any real retirement because, you know, no one's going to believe it anyway. Yeah. This is from Jarrett, J-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. 
who said, I heard UFC was going to do a show in New York or New Jersey a while back, and it was canceled for some reason. And why was it canceled? And well, the same thing happened in June. Um, he actually was extreme fighting many years ago. Um, this was actually the beginning of the end. Um, they scheduled a show in New York when the law passed to legalize it, and the New York Times in particular wrote story after story and editorials of how is this stuff going to be allowed in New York, and the mayor of New York got involved, and all of a sudden all the legislators who had voted the law in reversed the field and, and banned it immediately. And uh, UFC actually had run a show, was scheduled to run a show in um, Niagara Falls, um, right around the same period of time. In, so it would be in New York State, but they wanted to stay away from the New York market because they didn't want the heat. And there was the mayor of Niagara Falls, I think. There was so much heat in Niagara Falls that they actually, was like the Wednesday, no, it wasn't the Wednesday, it was like the Friday before, or the Thursday night before the show, it was like the, the night before the fight. They yeah, had to charter the all these jets the and, and, and fly everyone to Dothan, Alabama, and they had to put the show on in Dothan, Alabama, and they were literally still setting up the octagon like minutes before the pay-per-view started in Dothan, Alabama. And so you had all these fighters who didn't sleep the night before. And um, I remember, like, I was going to go to that show in Niagara Falls, and it was like Tuesday and Wednesday, and I hadn't decided. It was kind of like, am I going to go, am I not going to go? I forget what the fights were right now, but, but it was like I was leaning towards going, and David Isaacs was running UFC, and, and I knew about there was a court fight coming up. And David Isaacs said, like, um, oh, don't worry about the court fight. It's in the bag. We're going to win. And since he told me that, I said, like, I'm staying home because <laughs> they're going to have to, like, fly everyone <laughs> to a new location in Alabama at the last minute. And I would rather be home rather than take that trip. And that's what happened. Uh, whenever, I mean, <laughs> uh, let's see. Has Vince personally approached any of the big-name performers like Goldberg? Not yet. About uh, taking a buyout and signing a new contract. And if not, do you expect him to? Uh, I would, if I was Vince, I would. I would talk to him, you know. I would talk. To him. It's, I mean, economically, it just doesn't make sense for Goldberg to do it unless, I mean, but if Vince wants him, Vince, Vince can afford to pay Goldberg, you know, as much as that. Whatever he wants. He can afford to pay him whatever he wants because Goldberg can make it up if he's booked correctly, uh, in money that he's going to draw. But the, the, it's the whole thing of uh, will he do it? I don't know. And, and it's like you don't want to. Uh, there's, there's a weird thing. Oh, this is pretty. Yeah, this is pretty good. The salaries, though. You don't want it. He doesn't want up that salary structure. And all those XFL losses. I mean, I don't blame him if he can get away with it. Uh, Especially the losses for next year. Yeah. Okay, we'll just finish this up and we'll head to a break. Uh, in cases like Scott Steiner, could the WWE have a contract stipulation that would consider shooting a breach of contract? Shooting is a breach of contract. In <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> they, believe me, if anyone. Shoots either in the ring or, or for that matter, goes against the script um, on an interview in the WWF, like we said before yesterday. They will only do it once. We, they, it's not going to be like WCW where it happens week after week and nothing happens to the stars. I didn't even have a chance to do it a second time. Exactly. No, they will be sent home, and uh, they will be like Shawn Michaels when people will be going like, how come they're not using them? And it's like because they're trying to teach the rest of the guys a lesson that no matter how big a star you are, uh, they have a script, and that's the script, and you don't go into business for yourself in the WWF, and it's got to be run that way. That was a, a, one of the big failures of WCW. And, and anyway, this is from Del Gray, who goes, whatever happened to Bret Hart? He's uh, writing a book. Has he ever... Does mean Pete Rose is going to end up the hardcore champion for about ten seconds? Oh, boy. Yes. Yes. Well, you know what? If they were at the meeting, and they had, like, someone had suggested, just like you just did... They would all go, yes. And if no one suggests it, okay? If no one suggests it, then, then no, one, no one will have thought of it, and then no. Um, so, what's the, so what should we do? This reminds me of uh, when I was a kid. Did I, ever, I, I think I, I told you the story once. They, they did a, an angle uh, where they told people, now, whatever you do, uh, they were going to do a, a strap match with, with his manager, Gerhard Kaiser and Pat Patterson. And they announced it on television. But it was like a secret. Um, and, and, and they kept saying, like, week after week in the promos for this match at the Cow Palace. Oh, yeah. You know, like, you know I told you the story. Yeah. Now, now, whatever you do, don't tell, don't tell Kaiser it's a secret. And they did you know, they do it on TV each week in the promos. <laughs> now, whatever you do, don't tell Kaiser. And I remember the very last, the very last week, which was a Saturday, the show aired Saturday night, right before the Cow Palace, a couple of hours earlier. And Kaiser's there and goes, 
You know, and they go, like, if you see him at the, at the arenas, if you see him, just don't tell him. Don't tell him. It's a secret. And she goes, you know, there have been people saying something about strap. What is that? And they go, oh, they think that Patterson's going to give you a strap. And, oh, that's what it is? Oh, okay. So don't, don't tell anyone in the booking committee. they got to do that angle someday. But at the end, the Kaiser would come out the week before and go, I haven't watched all the TV. <laughs> I know about the strap match. <laughs> you know, um, which reminds me of some stupidity, is... Um, this is when I lived in Texas in 1984, and it's a Von Erich story. Um, the, the show, for, for like 100 years, maybe not 100 years, but probably 15 years or 10 years or 8 years or however long, as long as anyone can remember, there was a show on Channel 11 in that era that was taped Monday night at the Will Rogers Auditorium in Fort Worth, and it would air Saturday night on, um, it would air Saturday night on TV on Channel 11. And it's always been like that. Well, anyway... One week, Kevin Von Erich comes out, and he's doing this interview, and he goes, you know, I never knew this before, but somebody told me that this show airs on Saturday night. <laughs> and I'm going like, I couldn't believe it. It's like, so anyway. Uh, let's see, where were we? Uh, let's see, so, has, okay, Fred Hart, has he ever expressed interest in wrestling again, or at least being involved in the business? Uh, I don't, no, he's, I don't, I would, I don't expect him to ever wrestle again, but by saying that, you know, everyone always comes back. But yeah. I really don't expect him to wrestle again. Uh, has his concussion in it? Is there any possibility of him getting into the ring again? Certainly not now. He's not talked about that at all. Do you think he would have a chance of showing up in WF now that everything is up in the air? I mean, you never say never 100%, but uh, very, very unlikely. I think as long as maybe Vince is around, it's pretty unlikely. What was the time frame that he was given before he ended up being terminated? Wasn't it like this coming December? Oh, before he could come back in? Yeah. I don't even know if there was one. I, I got the impression that he's been told, you know, that he could never wrestle again. Uh -huh. Well, there, you know, you know, Hugh Morris was told the same thing. Look at Vampiro. Uh, Vampiro was told that he could come back. Yeah, but it was like, it was a long time down the road. Yeah, and then he got a clearance about three months later. Yeah. Yeah, because he wanted to come back, which is now, uh, Vampiro's another one. Let's see. Can you shed some light on the contract of Kevin Nash? I understand the concept of guaranteed contracts, even if you don't wrestle, you get paid, but I can't imagine a guaranteed contract allows you to be insubordinate. I don't think that the contract allows him to be insubordinate, but nobody has the guts to do anything about it, and so he just did whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. WCW officials have forced Nash to go to the final night, night tour and be in breach of contract. Yes, they could have, but I don't think anyone said that, like, if you don't go, you're going to be in breach of contract, because if they did, you're gone. You could have, not going to turn, turn down that kind the of thing. The fact that they asked and didn't tell him says a lot. Yeah. When you right. ask a guy, hey, do you want to be there, you got to expect that they might say no. Yeah, because Goldberg said the same thing. Neither of them, nobody was ordered to go. I mean, Sting wins, you know, and I'm, I'm glad he did. Just, you know, for, for whatever reason, it was it was nice to see him. You know. Mm. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, that's probably all we're going to talk about Kevin Nash, because we've got Jerry Lawler on the line. Jerry, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing well, but uh, I'll tell you right off the bat, I can barely hear you. Uh oh, we got get the get the. That's up. that's a little better. That's a little better. <laughs> okay, cool. Jer How are you? How are you? We're doing we're doing really good. So uh, me and uh, Brian Alvarez. Yeah. And um, what? Boy, this this last ten days of wrestling have been probably the most momentous ten days, maybe in the history of wrestling. How do you, from your perspective, what what are your thoughts on everything that's gone down? Oh well, you're right. Everything's sort of a blur for me. Uh, I mean, my mine uh, my blur started a little bit longer than ten days ago. You know, mine started uh, uh, two days after No Way Out, which has been nearly a month ago now. And uh, uh, there, you're right. It's it's been the craziest sequence of events. It's been the weirdest things that I've ever seen, and I've seen things that I thought would never never happen. And uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's almost too early to speculate on anything because it's it's not over. Things are are just still changing as we speak. You know, so I'm just kind of sitting back and seeing what what is going to take place. Did you watch the shows on Monday night? Uh, I watched, to be quite honest with you, I watched a little bit of uh, Nitro, and then I, that's all I watched. Okay, so you didn't see? No, well, did, did you see the big angle? Stuff? I'm you sorry. Angle Vince? Did you see angle with Vince Chain? Uh, no. Okay. Well, that was it's quite something to see, you know, where they simulcasted the two things. What was weird on the Raw show, and I don't, I don't know if you've talked to people or what you heard about, was 
there was, you know, I mean, Vince was out there talking about WCW talent that he apparently, I think, didn't want. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like he was, it was almost like firing people on the air, you know, like Animal and, and Jeff Jarrett. I mean, right. Very, I mean, I don't know what he did or what he didn't do. It was very the, only, the only thing I heard is uh, uh, my friend Randy Hales told me what he said about uh, Jeff Jarrett, about spelling the name and then saying now he's G-O-N-E. If, if, if that's what he did, that's what he told me he did. I didn't hear, what did he do with Animal? I didn't hear about that. Um, he had a clip of Animal. What did he say, Barry? Do you remember? I don't even I remember don't... the Animal thing. I just remember uh, Jared and Dustin. Okay, he ripped on Dustin and said, "Can you imagine that this guy wanted, you know, breast implants when he was when he was here?" And um, he said, "Remember, he said the, with Lex, he goes, I think the Lex Express is what he said, run out of steam or run out of gas or something." Yeah, years ago. So. Yeah, so <laughs> so it was it was a very uh, well. I mean, you know, let's, let's face it. I mean, he Vince uh, has the opportunity now to. Um, I mean, you know, he can basically write his own ticket. He can do exactly what he wants, and and that uh, that uh, has always been one of the things that Vince enjoyed doing was adding a, a bit of realism into into his storylines or, or or whatever. And and I think that's exactly what he's doing there. You know, I think that he is uh, sending a message probably to those guys that that uh, that they're not going to be wanted by the WWF. You know, one of the things that's going to come up next, obviously, is WWF versus WCW Angle in some form. And I was thinking back over the last 20 years that a lot of times when people have had opportunities to do these type of angles, and as often as not, they fail. And the one that that I remember as being probably the most well done and most successful was the one with you and Randy Savage back 83, 84, whenever it was. And what what do you think are like the pitfalls of what to avoid or or, or the way to do it to where it doesn't either burn out quick or just fall apart. Right. Well, I, now, if, if you think back on what happened with, uh, in, in our situation with Randy Savage, and I think the reason that it, that it uh, uh, went so well was because it, it wasn't a long, drawn-out situation, as this will have to be. I mean, because, you know, let's face it, Vince owns both companies, so it'll, it'll pretty much have, I mean, it'll have to continue on. We, we did ours in which, in which, uh, uh, and, 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 and ours, like, sort of like Vince's, uh, you know, ours stemmed from a true, uh, a real series of events. And, in fact, Randy Savage and his father, uh, and his brother, Lanny Poffo, you know, they had their own little small upstart promotion there in, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And, of course, uh, I was with, uh, you know, Jerry Jarrett and I had Jarrett Promotions, and, and Lexington was one of our, uh, monthly stops, uh, in, in our territory. And these guys just, you know, they that they made that their home, and they they, uh, to their credit, you know, did a good job of of uh, building up a little small uh, local promotion there. And um, there were there were, I guess, legitimate hard feelings uh, for a while there. You know, they did everything they could to, to they, on, on their TV. They would go on and and uh, basically knock us, and sometimes even you know, and, and challenge do challenge matches, and and sometimes even say that. Uh, I would be at their arena to wrestle against, you know, to to accept the challenge of Randy Savage, which of course, you know, that 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 kind of thing never took place, and I think it was really counterproductive for him. And and we basically just sort of ignored them for a while, and then and then finally, uh, the 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 case was they 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 just uh, ran out of money to promote their their uh, own own deal there, and and so they called up Jerry Jarrett and I and said. You know, guys, is there any way we can work something out where we can basically work together? We're, we're either going to go under with this thing, or, or and, and stop tr- trying to promote it, or, or, or we can try to make uh, something out of it. And so, basically, what we did, we just we just made one big match instead of it going on and on. You know, there was just the the one big promotion versus promotion match, and and we had one of their referees and one of our referees, and we had Randy Savage against me and. Uh, you know, we had uh, their promoter in, in Randy's corner and our promoter in my corner, and and, and it, you know, it uh, pretty much sold out Rep Arena there in, in Lexington. But then that was it, and 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 that that was really successful. But I think had we tried to carry it on for week and week and week, then the fans would have, you know, they would have seen through it and they would have they would, they would have lost interest fast. I think I think that you know another reason that worked then was because I mean it's so different than it is now. I mean you know now in the days of the internet and and everybody being so knowledgeable about what goes on behind the scenes, I mean, you know, how how is that going to how is that going to have any a, appeal? I mean, I'd say 95 percent of the people are going to know that you know, let's face it, Vince owns both companies. It's not a real 
<laughs> they said it on their TV. Right. <laughs> right. right. I mean, you know, uh, it, it, it just, uh, it, it's not going to have, the, I just don't think it's going to have the same effect as, as, you know, some of the ones in the past. Well, from your situation, is, is it just sit and wait and see how the landscape develops, or do you got any, I mean, it was, you know, when, when uh, you left the WWF a month ago, mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was very different for you because, quite frankly, if Baron Bischoff got started, and I don't know how much you talked or if you even did talk, the reality was he was going to come to you. He, he had to. You were a big name. You were a good announcer. They needed help on the announcing side anyway. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, with that, with that no longer being an option, I mean, to be a... I mean, you've got your local thing, but to be on national television, I mean, your option is Vincent Man or nobody right now. Oh, I, that's absolutely right, uh, and 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 it's it's true. You know, when when this all first happened, you know, it was it was never my uh, it was never my intention to uh, or or anything that Stacy or I either one wanted to go work for anybody else. This you know, this hit us completely cold, out of the blue. We were both perfectly happy in the World Wrestling Federation, and and thought that everything was fine and, until that day. And of course, then. Uh, you know, when something like that happens, you're sort of in shock for a while, and then you, and then you start trying to weigh your options. And, and of course, uh, I, we both felt that, uh, like you said, that uh, somebody from WCW would probably uh, want our services, but we didn't contact anybody. We didn't, uh, you know, I, I quite frankly wouldn't even know how to call anybody there or who to call. And uh, so there was there was no contact made. And then, of course, all of these. All of the other rumors started flying around, and then they became reality that uh, that Vince bought WCW. So, so as you say, now there's there is no uh, there is no other option out there except Vince. And um, you know, I think I think that uh, Vince has pretty well made it clear to uh, to us that we're not going to be coming back there. Even the uh, uh, fact that Paul Heyman appeared in your spot like the following Monday. After you were gone, you think there was anything to that, or it was just a coincidence, or what do you thought? You were ready with a new guy, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's like, uh, it's almost like the JFK assassination or something. There's a lot of theories out there, and I, I you know, I, I literally have been getting a, a minimum of a thousand emails a day from, and not just all over the country, but all over the world. And I'm, I'm shocked at how many people in the United Kingdom. I think everybody in the United Kingdom has a computer. And has my email address. It's like, it's like unbelievable the amount of uh, email I get from there. But I mean, from South Africa, from India, from Australia, from Ireland, and everybody knows about what has happened. And uh, and I'm getting all sorts of ideas and theories. And of course, I I had my own. And I, you know, these it's not any secret. I think I've pretty much uh, expressed on on my website, which by the way is uh, kinglawler.com. Uh, I think I've pretty much expressed what. You know some of the theories that I think uh, could have been behind this. Uh, the the only thing that I that I feel certain in my heart is that what they told us is not true. I mean that what the reason that they said Stacy was let go and I subsequently is gone. I I don't believe that it was anything to do with her attitude. I think there's something more to it than that. Uh, but and that's where there are several theories. And but uh, you know I don't know if we'll ever know exactly what it was. You mentioned that. Uh that you've kind of gotten the impression from the WWF that they would not want you back. Now, is that have they ever made a thing to you or something, some sort of a olive branch that you could come back, but that they would not want your wife back, or has it just been one of those things, or has that not ever been said to you? Well, um, <laughs> I guess I, I, I guess it was said to me uh, sort of unofficially, but then the the, the next day it was officially. Uh, pulled back uh, you know and, and a lot of people have, have gotten a lot of response from fans and they and they uh, and maybe this is a good opportunity to clear the air as to, as to what all is going on a lot of people say you know why don't you why don't you call Vince and 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 try to smooth this over and and, and all of that sort of thing and and just to tell you the sequence of events the the uh, you know we we did the um, the no way out in Las Vegas on the Sunday then we did of course the Phoenix we did the uh, Monday Night Raw, and then Tuesday is when is when all of this took place. When when uh, Jr. called 
uh, Jr. called me in and said, you know, uh, King, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to tell anybody. Uh, and my first reaction, I, I, I was scared. I thought something had happened to possibly somebody in my family. Like, you know, we were in Tucson, and I thought my, my mother was here in Memphis, 80 years old. I thought possibly something had happened to my mother or some member of my family. And Jr. was having to break the news to me. And I said, God, what, what's happened, Jr.? And he said, well, when I got here uh, at 2.30 today, he said, Vince called me into his office and said, Jr., i got something I need you to do. And he said, what's that? And he said, well, uh, I've decided we're not going to go any further with the uh, CAT RTC angle. And as a matter of fact, I want you to give Stacy her release today. And I said, uh, yeah, are you kidding or what? And he said, no. And he said, that's what he told me. And I said, well, what was the reason? And he said, well... He said something about the, the, the creative staff or the writers uh, said something about Stacy's attitude, and they feel if they give her any more airtime that she'll just become impossible to work with. And then I, th- I thought, for sure, this has got to be a joke. I mean, you know, I said, you get, you're kidding me, right? And he said, he said, no, King, I'm not kidding. And he said, I, I don't know how to tell her. And he said, I was wondering if, if, you, would, if you would tell her. So now they're not only, you know, telling me that Stacy's fired, they want me to go and tell, you know, they want me to fire my wife, right? And so I said, well... Uh, yeah, I guess I'll tell her, Jr. I'll tell her while I'm on my way to Memphis because if you know if you guys are going to treat her like that, then I'm I'm out of here as well. So anyway, uh, I went down. I basically had to tell Stacy that uh, you know that she had been released, and I said, "Come on, get your stuff. We're gonna we're going home." And on the way out, we saw Vince, and uh, we stopped into his office for a second, and Stacy spoke first and said, "Vince, what what did I do so bad to lose my job? What did I get fired over?" And Vince said, "Well." I'm not really sure uh, that's more of a talent relations issue. Well, Jr. is the head of talent relations, and he's the one that just told me he didn't know what it was about, that Vince just told him that when he walked in the building, you know. And so, um, anyway, to make a long story short, I told Vince, I said, well, Vince, I think you know me well enough to know that, uh, that I'm not going to stay here. And he said, well, King, I really appreciate everything you've done for us here in the WWF. You've gone above and beyond the call of duty, and you really helped us out a lot, and I want you to know we really thank you for that. He reached out, shook my hand, out the door we went. So we didn't hear a word from anybody uh, for for several days, not a word. We were just sitting at home. So um, what, what I'll do now is something that, I mean, nobody, you know, this, this, as I said, a lot of people have said, well, have you talked to anybody? Did you try to talk to anybody? And, and um uh, because a lot of people think that, well, if I would go and, and say, uh, you know, ask for my job back or whatever, that it would be there. You know, they think that uh, a lot of people say, well, this is, you, you know, it's basically your own fault for walking out. So uh, if you will, I'll just, I'll read you a letter that I wrote the following Saturday, and I faxed this to uh, New York and to Jr. who pulled it off the fax machine and hand-delivered it to Vince, and he said he knows Vince read it. And uh, and still no response. And the letter the letter was dated Saturday, March 3rd. It's a dear Vince. Now that a few days have passed since the events of last Tuesday, I've had some time to reflect on everything that has happened. I wanted to convey to you my feelings. First and foremost, I wish that last Tuesday had never happened. Both Stacy and I would like nothing better than for things to be like they were before Tuesday. Neither Stacy or I have any desire to work anywhere other than the World Wrestling Federation. That being said, we would both like to come back to the World Wrestling Federation if possible. I've racked my brain and tried to figure out exactly what caused Stacy's release. And if it's something as simple as her attitude, please understand that that can change. She is willing to personally apologize to anyone she gave a problem to or even an apology to the entire staff of the World Wrestling Federation and assure everyone that in the future she'll be the easiest person to work with that they've ever seen. I feel personally responsible for Stacy's action because from the time I first met her when she was 19 years old until today, I've shaped and molded her into exactly who she is now, nothing more, nothing less. So her actions are a reflection on me. She really feels bad about the situation and is really blaming herself, and I know I am as much to blame as she. So if the reason for Stacy's release is really something other than her attitude, and of course I've been around long enough to know that anything is possible and that things are not always as they seem, then we'll be willing to try to fix whatever problem exists. The only personal problem that I can think of might be uh, involved is between Stacy and China. At one time, they were very close, but when China and Triple H had their problems, it seemed Stacy and China no longer had things in common, and they grew apart, culminating with China asking you not to have Stacy involved in her angle with Eddie Guerrero. So if China once again didn't want Stacy involved in her angle with RTC, then that can be addressed. Stacy would be content to go in another direction or just wait until creative comes up with something else for her to do. Stacy would also be willing to try to clear the air with China if that's the problem. 
What I'm saying is that Stacy would do absolutely anything to have her job back. It's also occurred to me that maybe Stacy wasn't the problem at all, that the real reason for releasing Stacy was to force me to leave without having to fire me. I thought that possibly NBC was upset with me over my XFL commentary and put pressure on you to get rid of me. If that's the case, I can understand and accept that decision, but I wish it wouldn't cost Stacy her job as well. If you just feel that it was time to make a change in the announcing situation, then I can understand that as well. If you've been dissatisfied with my performance in any way in the World Wrestling Federation, I wish you would at least allow me the chance to rectify the problems. Vince, I've been in the WWF since 1993. I've seen a lot of people with attitude problems or worse problems get second and third chances. I don't want to work anywhere else. You and everyone at the WWF are like family to me, and I'm feeling like I've lost a loved one. So I'm asking, is there any way this can be fixed? Can Stacy and I come back in any capacity? Can we work more or less? We're willing to do whatever... Uh, you would want us to do to make this right? Could it be made into some kind of angle, business-wise, or whatever? You can reach me at my home number, which I gave my home number, my cell number, and then I said, thank you, Vince, and whatever you decide, I'll always be your friend and do anything I can for you. Yours very truly, Jerry Lawler. Hmm. And you've heard nothing back? Not a word. Until today, uh -huh. we received our official releases in the mail, Federal Express today. Isn't it interesting? The release comes right after they bought the company. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what the now. Now on the, uh, you know, you mentioned the China thing in the letter. Mm -hmm. Um. What's I mean? What's your thoughts on on all that? Or do you think that that just may be a thing? Or do you think that that's that's a bigger thing than anyone's ever talked about? You know, I, I mean, I, that's one of those things. Your guess is as good as mine. Who knows? I do know that, you know, they're, they're, as I said, at one time, uh, Stacy and China were very good friends, and, and, and Stacy and I and China and Triple H were good friends. At least I felt that way. I mean, they came to Memphis, we traveled together some, they came to Memphis, they stayed in our home, Stacy has stayed in their home in, uh, in, uh, you know, New Hampshire, and, um, and, and quite honestly, I don't, I'm, you know, I don't want to delve into their personal lives and their business, but as I said, at one time, we, we felt close, and, and um, uh, I, th I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty much public knowledge that at one time Triple H and China were, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, you know, very close. And uh, and now that's, I'm not saying that they're not very close, but, you know, at least they're not the couple that they were at one time. And uh, I think that, a, I think that this is just my thinking now. I think that a problem arose when, when in the last, Last February, not this past February, but February before that, uh, Stacy and I became engaged to be married, and and uh, it was like right after that, uh, China and and Triple H had had their problems and sort of sort of pretty much split up, and so it was almost like you know Stacy and China didn't have that much in common anymore. It was like uh you know if china was around stacy here you know she's around somebody that uh, are looking forward to getting married and that sort of thing and then you know she had just broken up with with triple h and so it was a kind of a situation where they grew apart there and um it it sort of culminated into if you if you remember when when china was doing the uh the breakup with eddie guerrero uh i went to vince and suggested a a a, a thing where uh, eddie guerrero take Stacy out as the little mini me China, you know, as little Chinette to sort of get back at China as part of the storyline, right? And Vince, I mean, you know, he, he, when I suggested it, he like slapped his head and he said, that's a great, he said, I can't believe we didn't think of that. That's a great idea, King. Well, for one reason or other, China didn't think it was a great idea. And even though they went ahead and did that, uh, little angle that night, uh, apparently China went to Vince the next day and said, you know, I don't want her involved in, uh, my program. So now you wrote the um, the RTC storyline with you heading towards WrestleMania, right? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I wrote the RTC storyline, but the the way I originally, or I, I say I wrote it, it was an idea that I gave to the writers and, the, and an idea that I gave to Vince, and uh, and then of course they decided to go with it there. But I I uh, I, I didn't have it uh, written the way that they did. I, I didn't have myself involved at all. I just I uh, the way I had it written was that Stacy um basically that Stacy would would demand a, a title match with Ivory simply because of 
you know, Ivory had, had hurt China, and, and China was Stacy's friend, and, and she would demand a match with uh, Ivory because she had beaten Ivory. And, you know, Ivory was the one that Stacy beat to become the WWF champion in the past and, and in that in that water match or pudding match or whatever. But anyway, uh, it was going to be Stacy demand a match with Ivory, and then Ivory would say, or Ivory and Stephen Richards would say, well, you know what? She doesn't really deserve a title match, and she's got everything to gain and nothing to lose, so why don't we do this? You know, uh, the, the interview would have been Ivory saying, you know, she's the little tramp that started the WWF on the road to ruin anyway by exposing herself on, on the pay-per-view. We need to, you know, we need to teach her some morals. Why don't we do this? She can have a title match under one condition. If she wins, she's the WWF Women's Champion, but if she loses, She's got to join right to censor, and we will teach her some morals. And it didn't involve me at all, and they were going to, of course, have the match, and then uh, Ivory win the match, and, and Stacy would have to be inducted into right to censor against her will. And, and then my ideas after that were that, you know, the following day they were going to bring Stacy down dressed as, uh, dressed just like Ivory and right to censor, and as they started to make, a, as they started to make a, an interview talking about how you know they are going to they're going to make an example out of her and they're going to bring her around and 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 have Stephen Richards say tell the world how great it is to be in right to censor and and have Stacy just stammer and stutter and say ah oh, heck I can't do it somebody hit my music and start the boom the stripper music starts playing boom Stacy rips her dress off you know she's down to bra and panties and the right to censor's panicking and they hustle her up to the back you know and it was going to be a thing where each week they would try to you know force their influence on her but she would. She would stubbornly, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to fight off their influence and then, and then it, it culminate in, I, I just thought, you know, I just had several different ideas where she could cause dissension in there, she could cause, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the next, the idea that I actually had for him to do the day that we got let go was, uh, uh, you know, Val Venus was to go to Stephen Richards and say, look, you know, in my past, unfortunately, I've had to deal with women like the cat. You let me have a personal hands-on a few minutes with her, and I promise you results. I can bring her around to our way of thinking. And then have Val go into a room with the cat, and, and, and then, you know, hour goes by, and Stephen Richards and Wright, the censor, out there looking at their watches, thinking, how long is this going to take? And then, of course, towards the end of the show, the door opens, and Val comes out all sweaty. His hair's all mussed. His tie's undone. He's got lipstick all over his collar. And in the background, you see a smiling cat, and it's obvious that Val is backslid, right? And then, you know, try this again next week with even Stephen Richards, uh, gonna, Stephen Richards saying, uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, take this into my own hands, you know, and the same thing happens to Stephen. And then after that, maybe even have Ivory say, well, uh, you men don't know how to handle a woman. Let me take care of this situation. You know, and there were endless possibilities of what could happen, right? And of course, this stuff would have led up to uh wrestlemania which was that, that wasn't necessarily my you know i wasn't even thinking anything about wrestlemania at the time I, it was just an, an idea to get stacy involved in a storyline and uh you know who, who knows i just think that it's a possibility that somebody could have been upset that this was um you know infringing on the other the other angle that was already set for for wrestlemania which would have been ivory and in china well it's just kind of interesting that um that whole thing went down and a couple weeks later here's china back for that match Oh right! Oh, and, believe, and, me, China, believe me, China was there at the, China was there at Tucson, uh, you know, in a uh, heavy conversation with Ivory and uh, uh, Stephanie, right when the uh, production meeting ended. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, who's, who's to know? There, believe me, there's uh, there's other theories out there. You heard me mention about uh, you know about the um, um, XFL commentary. Yeah. Who, who's to say? You know, I made a comment on the XFL game about Honda automobiles, and um, uh, you never can tell. That you know, that could have been that could have been a problem. So somebody could have called Vince up and said from NBC and said, "Hey, man, you know, the Honda people are going to pull their advertising if you don't get rid of this guy." Um, I was just looking at it there as maybe you know, if someone said that, they just you take you off the XFL broadcast team. Why take you off Raw and SmackDown? Well, that's that's true too. You know, and I read China's book. That's why I lean towards that theory. What China? <laughs> Was that China thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Jerry, you know, one thing, um, I guess, after you left the WWF, because, I mean, for you, I mean, aside from this big story of WWF and WCW, you know, you've been in the news uh, a lot, at, not just with the, the thing that happened in uh, Tucson, but then uh, about a little over a week ago, 
you returned to Memphis Television on Channel 5, and it ended up resulting in the WWF pulling the developmental talent away from Power Pro Wrestling. And any thoughts on that? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I thought that that was, that's like, I mean, that's just spiteful or vindictive or uh, being a little bit petty. I mean, how how in the world is uh, Stacy and I gonna, being on Memphis Television going to affect or, or adversely affect uh, the WWF? developmental deal i mean and and you know you asked earlier about uh, had there been any any olive branches or anything like that floated well week before last um this was uh, not this past thursday but thursday before last uh i guess uh word was given to that's when word was given to randy hales that if uh, Bruce Pritchard called Randy Hales that morning and said, Randy, we'd rather you not use King on their show. We're, we're still, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's going to happen here. And, and Bruce said, you know, at this time we're all hoping that King will come back. And, but right now we'd rather you not have him on the show and, uh, with, uh, with our WWF talent. And so he said, well, um, I left him off the show last week. Uh, you know, at your guys' request, and he said, I really, he said, you know, he helps our ratings here in Memphis, and, and I really want to have him on the show. And Bruce said, well, I'm just going to tell you now that if you have him and Stacy on your show, then we're going to pull our deal from you, and we're going to, you know, we're not going to have the wrestlers uh, be on your show, and we're going to pull our $750 a week to you. So, um, anyway, then that was that was on a Thursday, and then uh, amazingly enough, a little bit later on that day, I got a call from Jr. This was the first time that Jr. actually uh, called me. I had spoken to him a couple times, but I had always had to call him. But this is the first time he called me. And uh, you know, I'm, I, I won't quote word for word, but but Jr. expressed uh, you know his feelings that he uh, thought that you know our chemistry on Raw was something that that is going to be very, very difficult to replace, and that Kevin Dunn, who is the, you know, he's the executive producer of television and that sort of thing, and that he and Kevin were in agreement that they would like to have me back on Raw. And he said, now, I'm not saying that we won't ever work with Stacy uh, down the line. Uh, you know, you never say never in this business. Uh, he said, but we, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow with Vince, and we would like for you to, you know, we want to talk to Vince, and we would like for you to come back to Raw. And he said, and, and, and see if this would make it more palatable. We, if, you, if you want, you can come back and just do Raw in one pay-per-view a month. And he said, you don't even have to do SmackDown. He said, we can leave Paul on SmackDown, and, uh, and you can just come in on Mondays and do your deal and, and, and head home. And uh, so I said, well, just a couple of things. I said, let, let me ask you this. Now, um, I said, you know, this, this has been really hard on Stacy. I said, you know, she feels she got fired, and I feel she got fired for no apparent reason. Nobody will actually say what the problem is. And I said, it's not, I said, yeah, it's not this, the, the money thing or anything like that. I said, it's embarrassing. It's traumatic, you know. I said, can you approach Vince with this? I said, Stacy's contract is such that if she's not at TV, uh, then she doesn't get paid. So, you know, she has to be at the TV in order to get paid. So I said, if if it's true that some of the writers have a problem with Stacy's attitude, or if it's some, the creative team has a problem. I said, Jr., you and I know that you and I have been here a lot longer than any all of these writers put together, and they come and go like the wind, you know. Uh, and he said, that's right. And I said, well, let me ask you this. Is there a way to just leave Stacy on the roster? I mean, you know, so that she's still, she's just, she's still a WWF diva, so to speak, but you don't bring her to TV. She's not costing you a penny. She's not at TV. She's not in any of the writers' hair. There's no problem there. And then down the road, if this blows over or if they uh, can think of something else that they want her to do in the future, then you bring her back to TV. Until then, she just stays home, uh, and it's, there's no problem for anybody, and I come back. And he said, well, we'll talk to Vince about it tomorrow. So, uh, and then I said, now let me ask you one other thing. I said, Randy... Uh, Hales got called by Bruce Pritchard this morning and said that if we're on TV here Saturday, that uh, you know his deal's going to be pulled. And Jr. said, Ah, that's he said that's you know that's that's too much. He said, Don't worry about that. He said, I'll get that straightened out. He said, It's not going to hurt anything for you guys to be on TV. 
And I said, well, can I tell Randy to call you and tell him that? And he said, yeah, tell him to call me. So I hung up the phone. I felt good, you know, and I called Randy, and I said, call JR, and I think you'll be happy. And so Randy calls me back in a few minutes, and he said, oh, this is great. He said, I talked to JR. He said, it's fine to have you on the show, and he said, things look promising. I said, cool. So that was on a Thursday, right? Friday comes, and this is when they're supposed to have their meeting with Vince. There's uh, no phone call, no phone call. Now it's Friday afternoon, and all of a sudden the phone rings, and it's Randy Hales. And I could tell immediately he's all down, he's dejected, and I said, what's the problem? He said, well, boy, what a difference a day makes. I said, what's that? He said, well, I just got a call from Bruce Pritchard, and he said once again, without a shadow of a doubt, that I cannot have you or Stacy on my show Saturday, and if you guys are on there in any way, shape, form, or fashion, videotape or anything, they'll pull their deal and they'll pull all their talent. Now, this is Friday afternoon, and the show's got to go on Saturday morning, right? He said, they'll pull all their talent from the show, and, and uh, they'll pull my $750 a week developmental deal. And I said, wow. Well, let me call Jr. I called Jr. in his office. I said, Jr. I guess the meeting didn't go too well, huh? And he said, no, King, it didn't. Uh, he said, Kevin, has Kevin not t- called you? He said, Kevin Dunn was supposed to call you and tell you everything. And I said, no, I haven't heard from Kevin. He said, well, I'll call him. I'll tell him to call you. And I said, that's all right. I'll call Kevin now. Hung up with Jr. I called Kevin Dunn, and he said, well, King. I said, uh, once again, I said, I guess the meeting didn't go too well, huh, Kevin? He said, no. He said, Vince just. Uh, he said, Vince just feels that the uh, hurdles are too big to overcome. And I said, what hurdles are those? And he said, well, what you did to the company. I said, what I did to the company, which would be what? And he said, well, you know, you you walked out on us that day uh, right before SmackDown, and then, then you gave out the writer's email addresses on your website and the company's telephone number. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, let's let's be realistic. First of all, Kevin, uh, you know, the email addresses. I said, give me a break. I said, it takes touching one button to delete all your email and I said, it takes a total of about 15 seconds to change an email address. I said, so that's that's a big high hurdle right there. I said, and second of all, anybody can call information and get the company's telephone number. I said, that that was no big secret. And he said, well, Vince just said that uh, he'd rather just part ways. I said, well, okay. Uh, so that, that's it. I guess we'll be getting our releases. And he said, yeah, you'll be sent your release tomorrow. Well, of course, a whole week went by. And like you said, we didn't get our release until the day after the WCW deal went down. Yeah. Uh, the, now the the thing that's so weird about that is is you know the, the in a sense they spited themselves as far as the developmental talent because I mean to me one of the best things about the Memphis deal is is that they're on a live television show that's actually watched you know like it's not a public access show it's an NBC affiliate it's watched by a lot of people. And, I mean, you know, that's a great way to, you know, I mean, that's a great way to learn how to do your interviews and how to project yourself on television. Right. And, you know, I mean, as, as, as a prelude to being on Raw, because Raw also is a live show. Exactly right. It's like, and, what's and, the downside? It's not like you got a WCW guy there or something that could have been an intermediary talking to these guys or something. It's, you know, an unaffiliated guy. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't understand. I swear, I've been in the wrestling business over 30 years, and I thought I'd, I thought I was – pretty knowledgeable on, on, you know, what you should and shouldn't do, and, and that's, you know, these are just some things I, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't get their thinking. There's something, but that's why I say there's something more to this than just uh, than just uh, uh, attitude problem with Stacy. There's an email. Right. Yeah. I want to start taking some phone calls. Let's start with Franco in Ontario. Franco, you're first up. Hey, gentlemen. How are you? Here Hi. Uh, King, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, King. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours. I've been uh, I've been watching you for a long, long, long time, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, you know there's a lot of people in Canada here that support you, and I have a lot of friends that are big, you know, big King fans. And uh, whatever you do in the future, we wish you the best. Uh, just to start off with, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, first of all. Uh, I don't know about the wrestling side of whether you want to continue wrestling, and that means, you know, getting into the ring and, and, and actually wrestling, or do you want to do commentary or whatnot, and what the chances of an upstart company coming up in the future, and maybe you going to work with them. But I think that Vince needs 
something that's going to hurt him as much as it's hurt all a lot of people that he's hurt. And I, I really, truly, truly believe in about a year's time from now, when he's running both companies, that a lot of wrestlers are going to be really upset with the way that Vince does business, especially with contracts and, 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 and whatnot and leverage. And I really, truly believe that somebody is going to show up at some point in time and get into the ears of the people that carry the belts. And I want your opinion on this. Say next year, 2002, right before WrestleMania, right before the Great American Bash, if that's what's going to be the, their, their premier um, pay-per-view, you get a lawyer or a couple of lawyers get into some of these people's heads that are carrying belts and say, look, you know what, you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars. The pay structures come down, this, 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 and this. Let's get everybody that carries the belts. And you know, Jerry, it takes at least three to four years to get champs over where they're officially over uh and and they and they they get these guys and they say you know boycott wrestlemania boycott great american bash don't go there you know we'll go on tv and we'll say look we want a union for these wrestlers we want a union for the people that are on the mic we want a union for for the managers and the union for the people that work backstage uh, and, and, and I think Vince at that point is gonna say, holy cow, what did I get myself into? Do you foresee anything like that happening? Because that's the only way, uh, you, you know, uh, the people that work in the business are gonna have any leverage with this guy because this guy is just gonna go, like you said earlier, he's gonna go on a rampage. He's just gonna do whatever he feels like doing and he's just gonna use the wrestlers and the people behind the scenes like carcasses. Well, you know, I mean, um there's you know there's a lot of uh, validity to what you say but uh, as far as uh, I could probably answer your question as just my own thoughts as to how I feel uh, in in one word do I see, foresee this happening and the answer would be no and that's simply because historically wrestlers are their own worst enemies uh you know they're, they 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 some they just usually aren't smart enough to do what's right for everybody they'll they're always trying to do what's right for themselves you know they're the they're the main group of let's look out for number one guys that uh, you know, and I'm, I'm I probably fit right in that category. But but it's just a sad fact that that's that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, I don't think you would ever get enough of the guys to say, yeah, let's all stick together and go against uh, the only guy that's in the you know the only promoter in the world, Vince McMahon. I just don't think it'll happen. There will be enough guys that are that'll go to Vince and say, forget those guys. I'll, I'm, I'm not going to join any union, Vince or. Or he, you know, it's 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 uh, you, you got to realize this is not like these guys aren't air traffic controllers. So it's not like you, uh, uh, which by the way got replaced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these, yeah. these guys can can be replaced. I mean, these the wrestling talent, uh, you know, these superstars are made by the promoters, and 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 you know, nobody is indispensable. I mean, he can he he just. He could take somebody literally off the street and make them into a superstar through the monster he, of the media of television. And the, the other thing too is is that is that now because one guy's owning it and there's and there's probably going to be fewer jobs. There's going to be more people than ever looking for that opening. Those right. guys, right. And, unless it's literally everyone sticking together, which isn't going to happen. It ain't the guys happen. who say they're going to do it, yeah, the guys who say they're going to do it are going to be the ones with their throats cut. Dan, I, I see an example is um Brian and I've talked about this before. Uh, when the whole thing happened with Benoit and those guys, I mean, I could tell you Saturday night I was on the phone with many of those people, not necessarily the ones that left, um, but there were probably 16 wrestlers on Saturday night that were going to go up to uh, Bill Bush and say, we're quitting if Kevin Sullivan is the booker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it came down to, to Sunday, I mean, six guys went in that room, and the other ten, you know, uh, their, their feet were made of cement. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the way it's always been, and that's the way it always will be. But and 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 you know, I can't. I can't say that uh, if you're if you're looking out for your best interest, I can't say that that's necessarily wrong because that's that's what's going to happen. Believe me, you can. You you you. The promoter, the the wrestling company creates those stars. They have the they have the TV. That's the all important uh, vehicle. And 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 I'm. I'm I mean it when I say you can literally take somebody off the street and make them into, force feed them to the public and make them into a superstar. King, are you watching the ratings uh, on Raw on Monday night? Are you following the ratings since you've been gone? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I've checked. I checked the, those on the internet. Okay, you know that the ratings have not been the greatest since you've left. You know, Paul Heyman might be uh, a great uh, announcer, and uh, you know, respect to him. But you know, their ratings are not what uh, I think Vince wants. And oh, I, I, I mean, without a doubt, it's there's there had to be, and and I I can tell you this from from in, you know being inside the WWF for the past nine years, uh, major. Disappointment over the ratings Monday night. I mean, major. A four-seven on the last Raw before WrestleMania, especially with all of the of the mainstream publicity that was given to these shows because of the you know it's the first night. What's going to happen with with uh, Vince buying the WCW and all that stuff? And then for Raw to only get a four-seven. Well, and, and then and then the other part of it also is is that second hour should have been through the roof because the first no competition. The, the, yeah, no, well, not, that's that's just no competition. But for the first time ever, night flooded. It. The Nitro was plugging Switch to Raw. I mean, the, the end of Nitro was, you know, don't forget, coming up in the second hour of TNN, we're going to have this, this, and this, and Steve Austin and The Rock and all this. And it's like, you know, Nitro was, you know, instead of Nitro going off the air, I mean, Nitro went off the air goes, and telling everyone switch to TNN, and they didn't and they didn't do it, and that surprised me. Right. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not naive enough to believe that... Uh, that you know, well, I mean, it's the old, it's the old uh, saying, you know, one monkey don't make no show. Well, I mean, you know, I, I know that I'm not uh, the show of Raw or anything, but I think that I was a, a integral part of it. I think that the, I think that the charisma and the and the chemistry that Jr. and I brought to that show was something that's really irreplaceable, and and the thousands of people took it for granted and didn't even realize. Until it's the old saying, you know, you don't know what you got until it's gone, and 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 I think it it, it really opened a lot of people's eyes as to how important that uh, you know we're 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 the guys that are on that show more than all of the wrestlers combined. We're on more than The Rock. We're on more than Steve Austin. We're on more than Triple H. We're on more than Kurt Angle. We're on every minute of that show, and and we're the ones that really are responsible for selling that product to the fans. And, and I think that Jr. had and I had developed a unique way of doing that that was entertaining. It wasn't hard sell. It wasn't like two shields sitting out there, which which is what it reminds me of now. You know, it's like you go, it's like two used car salesmen screaming at you. Uh, and 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 I think people resent that. But I think you know when all of a sudden when I was gone, I mean I I can only tell you by. 42,000 hits on my little website that not many people even know about. 42,000 hits on the day this happened, and 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 the thousands of emails I've gotten, and I can't tell you how many of them said have said that I'm not going to watch Raw anymore. I'm not going to watch SmackDown. I'm not going to buy a pay-per-view anymore. Uh, just basically uh, in protest. And if if one person or a thousand people take the time out to sit down and write that to me, how many more people are thinking the same way out there that don't you know that don't have the opportunity to uh, express their feelings to me. I, I think that it has it has made a difference in the show. I think the show is not as good as it was. And I'm not knocking I'm not knocking Paul Heyman. Uh, you know he's doing as good as he can do. It's just that it's just that uh, there was there was a little bit of magic there between Jr. and I and the way that we did the show. It's something that developed over a, a almost nine year period and and it's something that can't be replaced overnight. And I think this has brought the people's attention to how good that really was. And that, combined with the way we were released, has turned a lot of people off. I agree. I thank you very much for your time. Okay. I was listening to that song, and it actually reminded me of that uh, feud that we were talking about earlier, because the first time I heard Midnight Express' his entrance music was for Randy Savage, during that period when, um, I mean, actually... Was he doing it when we did with the thing with you, or was that actually a couple of years earlier? I don't know, I but it's, you're right. As soon as I heard that music, it reminded me of something. <laughs> that was uh, was an uh, entrance theme that we had uh, uh, down here in the Memphis area for somebody. Were you guys? Now, were you guys the first ones to do entrance music, or was the Freebirds doing that? Do you know the, the chronology of that? Well, you know, we we were pretty innovative down here in Memphis. We did a lot of we had a lot of first. Um, I know we had the first music wrestling music video in in like 1970. Uh, three, I did a song, I recorded a song called Bad News, and we did that as a music, uh, a wrestling music video. We did, um, uh, and, and after that basically started with musical entrances and, and that sort of thing, and, uh, a, a lot of things that, uh, that basically became mainstream. I mean, you know, uh, 
after after they were seen nationwide. You know, the, the advent of cable and people being able to see uh, uh, the wrestling from all over, from from New York or Atlanta, basically all over the country, was the you know that was the big change. I mean, but a lot of this stuff had been going on regionally in different different regions all around the country for a long time. A couple of things, you know, when we talk about early, the earlier part of your career in, in Memphis, we had we had a lot of emails about that. And actually, whenever we have a guest like Lance Russell, we've got Randy Hales on, and, and invariably, your career, your that part of your career is always the main topic. Um, what, you know, you were you were there. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Number one is, is if you could point to any one thing, what do you think was the reason that you know territorial wrestling and especially like either, either you know both well-run and non-well-run territories ended up you know, not making it, and also, in your run in Memphis, who would you say was the the best opponent that you ever had or your favorite opponent to work with, and who was the one guy who, uh, if you could come up with a guy who you just didn't like to work with for whatever reason, but, you know, it ended up working out anyway, like box office-wise? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, which one? What, what do you want me to answer first? I, I, think you, I think you asked something about, you know, what, what happened to regional wrestling and what happened to territories, and, and I think that, you know, uh, most people realize that that you know with the advent of cable, you know before cable, there were, gosh, I think there were one time like 32 different rest, regional wrestling organizations or companies around the country, and and a different promoter in each one of those little regions. And these guys, uh, you know, they had an alliance. They had the National Wrestling Alliance, and these guys would would honor each other's boundaries, and and they wouldn't step on each other's toes, and they would exchange talent, and it and it it worked well. Uh, the way it was, uh, you know, the way it was devised for for many many years, and then and then when cable came along, and all of a sudden uh, you had the Vince McMahon on, and 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 he realized, well, gosh, you know, my my wrestling show now is being seen all over the country. Why do I need to just stay in my region up here? Why don't I promote wrestling all over the all over the United States or all over the world for that matter? And and you know that that's what happened. And and then the 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 main stars from each one of these little regional territories and, and, and what would happen in those days, you could, you know, you, it, it's, it's not good, as Vince is going to find out, to have too many main stars. Uh, and, 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 and what happened was there were probably three to six main stars in each one of these little regions. Well, all of these guys at, at that time when the, when the network or the national cable came along, well, naturally, these guys, it's human nature. They all wanted to be part of this uh, this new phenomenon. They wanted to be seen worldwide on cable. So that's how Vince was able to buy up or, or hire all of this major talent from these places. And uh, subsequently, when when these little small regional territories lost their major talent, uh, and then not to mention the fact that Vince came back with their with their own homemade talent and ran in the in their own cities in, in his promotion, you know, it, it, it eventually put all of these people, uh, almost all of them, out of business. The one reason that our territory in Memphis survived a little bit longer than most of them was the fact that I was fort- I was I was not only uh, the main wrestling star in the in the area, but I was also one of the owners of the company. So it was in my best interest not to leave, not to go to work for the for the major company, because had I done that, then our our company would have folded up too. So I stayed and. And uh, and and so we were able to survive, you know, and ha- and hang on here because we didn't lose our our main stars. And and uh, and of course, you know, the finally Vince, uh, they finally allowed me to come to work there and still work in Memphis. I was one of the first guys that that was able to work for the WWF and not have an exclusive contract where I could still go back and and work our own territory. You know, everybody else had to go to work and for exclusively for Vince. Um, and, Why do you think that was? Well, because I, you know, I. I I like to think that they wanted me bad enough and knew that I was not going to, uh, uh, that I wasn't going to leave Memphis, so to speak, uh, and that we weren't going to just give up on our territory. And, and probably I think that maybe Vince had the foresight to realize that he was going to need some territories like Memphis to survive. I mean, just, just for what he's using it for now. A developmental, you know, I mean, you can't, if you, if you, if all you have is your big major company, WWF, and, and uh, know where to develop new talent. You just can't take somebody off the street and throw them on Monday Night Raw. You know, they've got to be trained somewhere. They've got to learn how to do what they're going to do on Raw somewhere. And so Vince, I guess, hopefully was smart enough to realize, hey, you know, we better not have all of these places go under because we're going to need a training ground for our future stars. You know, in 1993 when you made the move, that was a huge deal in wrestling because uh, you were, you were a, a big critic and largely to protect your territory uh, because you were fighting the WWF in your own territory. How hard was it for you to actually go to the WWF after the things you had said, or was it just one of those things where, you know, it's business and everyone understood you were the owner of the territory, and 
whatever he said about the WWF when they would come to Memphis was just, you know, trying to protect your own business, basically. Well, I, I think everybody, I think most people within the, uh, within the wrestling organization realized that's exactly what it was. You know, we were, we were struggling. We were, we were, uh, hanging on by the skin of our teeth trying to avoid going out of business here in Memphis. And, 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 uh, and I'm not saying that Vince was actually p- trying to put everybody out of business intentionally. I don't, I really don't think that was, uh, that what what he was trying to do it just that just was a natural progression when he had all the stars working for him you know it just that just happened uh but but we you know we here were were struggling to hang on to our territory and and, and the things that i said uh, uh to knock the wwf were just just for that reason to try to you know to try to keep the, our fans here in memphis loyal to uh our memphis wrestling and then when I then when I did uh, start working for the WWF, as I said, I think most people, most of the people in wrestling knew uh, what the situation was. However, a lot of the you know a lot of the fans in Memphis thought you know what what's the deal now? Why 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 are you all of a sudden working for the company that you used to uh, uh, knock so hard? And so you know it took some explaining. I had to I had to I mean basically went on the air and, and told the people the truth of uh, of what was going on. You know so. I think all of that is all of that has worked out for us, and 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 uh, or, or at that point, and and Memphis, you know, was able to uh, able to survive, and uh, I think just the climate, so to speak, for wrestling, you know, Memphis Memphis wrestling is almost still now the way it was run uh, 30 years ago. We have a Saturday morning live wrestling show on on local TV, and uh, there was a time when, and 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 this is not an exaggeration, that that Saturday morning wrestling show we used to get. Uh, and you know a good rating is a four or five or something like that. We used to get a twenty rating, a twenty rating. Oh yeah, I remember those. I days. mean, it was just unbelievable. It was like the most. It was unheard of. Nobody, no kind of television. We on Saturday morning that wrestling show had more people watching than any prime time show on any network in Memphis, and yes. it was just it was just unbelievable. But you know, I think times have changed, and and with the, all of the cable saturation and that sort of thing, it's. The wrestling is not is not really a Saturday morning uh, 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 staple anymore. You know, I think now people expect to see their wrestling on Monday nights or or uh, you know Wednesday or Thursday nights and that sort of thing. I think it's a prime time uh, uh, show now, and and so uh, subsequently it's it's tough to to still be trying to give the people the same thing that you were giving them 20 or 30 years ago. You returned last week almost to the seven, right? Yeah, we did a, a, a 6.7. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good, you know. That's I mean, I was I was I was proud of that fact. Uh, uh, Doesn't the average like a two five? I'm sorry. Two five was a real bad. Two five was a real bad week. Yeah, okay. two five was a bad week. But uh, uh, you know, what they did the week you, before, talk about, you talk about now. There's another show on. There's a Memphis Championship Wrestling show that's on at the same time on Channel 30, and this is where now the WWF developmental talent will wind up. And their show this past week did a 0.3 rating. Ooh. Right. I mean, that's horrible. And it's just like, you know, wh- how is that going to help develop your talent to be seen on a show like that? You know, or to work on a show like that? It's almost, it's almost demoralizing. You know, it's, I, I would think that's detrimental rather than being helpful, uh, to your, to your new talent. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll go off over in Arkansas and take the show somewhere in a little school gymnasium with 25 or 30 people in attendance. And it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, I think it's counterproductive. I just, Let's I go to Jonathan in New York. Jonathan, what's going on? Yeah, um, hey, what's up, King? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, uh, oh, what's up, Dave? No, it's, um, I'm the guy who called last Monday, if you remember. Okay. Okay, um, King, um, I would like to know, what's your next move? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're just, Stacy and I both are just sort of sitting here buying our time. I mean, I have, there's, and, and of course, this is, uh, in one way it's good, and of course in another way it's not as attractive as, uh, say, for instance, being at WrestleMania or whatever. But, but I mean, there's no, there's no lack of uh, interest or no lack of offers or work out there. And, and right now, I have taken some bookings and taken some appearance bookings, and Stacy and I both have, and we're booked every single weekend uh, all the way up through June right now. And, and, and we've had to turn down things. We've been offered a tour of, of uh, we've been offered a 21-day tour in England that we turned down. We've been offered a tour in Japan that we've turned down. Uh, and, and so it's not a situation where you're not in demand, and, and a lot of people don't realize how many independent promotions there are out there that, that still want uh, to have wrestling shows and how many 
uh, card, uh, baseball card stores or memorabilia stores or wrestling stores that want appearances and autograph signs. And, you know, this, this Sunday when everybody else is going to be at WrestleMania, I'm going to be in Winnipeg, Canada doing a personal appearance at a custom car show. Uh, and, uh, quite honestly, I'm probably making more money there than I would have made at WrestleMania. But, but, uh, there's, you know, there's no, there's no shortage of that kind of, uh, stuff out there right now. And I'm sure that could go on for, for quite some time, but you know, it, it's not—it's not the same as being on uh, on worldwide TV, of course. And and, uh, and after a while, when you're not on TV, that you're—you know—anybody would know that uh, uh, your popularity and, and uh, exposure is, is going to suffer. So uh, right. I don't—I don't really know exactly what the next moves are. Uh, naturally, I, we would, as you heard me say earlier in our letter, we would we would love to get a call saying they'd like to have us back in the WWF. But uh, you know, I don't—I don't. I don't necessarily foresee that happening well i mean during your time in the wwf you your character um, jerry lawler the announcer was fascinated with uh, puppies right am i right 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 okay and uh, in real life but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> okay uh what do you think about the women of wrestling you know that 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 wild thing that they have on channel five what do you think about that wouldn't it be like a a next move for that character of jerry lawler well the i mean the only thing that i guess that's a syndicated show see we don't we don't get that here in memphis i, I honestly have never seen uh i've never seen one episode of that show i've heard about it of course and right. and uh it's it's i guess very similar to back when they had uh and i guess the same guy is david mcclain yeah yes dave david yeah, McClain. it's, it's, the same it's guy very similar to glow the, the glow really the same thing same thing yeah yeah uh you know i, I i'm a i'm a big fan uh, and th- th- this is probably not, you know, a lot of people would disagree with this. I am a huge fan of women in wrestling. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I am not a huge fan of women wrestling. If you if you know what I mean, you know. Okay. I, okay. No, okay. Yeah, don't. Not, I, I don't. I'm not crazy about seeing women wrestle, and I, I honestly don't think most people are. It's like uh, it's all that's almost a turn off to me. But Man, look I, at Lita. Huh? I am, huh? Look at Lita. She yeah. can wrestle. And then and, and they, they, they have uh, China. She's yeah, like I, I the. Know, uh, you know what? I mean, I don't. I don't. I'm just a guy. I'm, I mean, I don't like to watch Lita wrestle. I like to watch Lita stand at ringside with her pants <laughs> almost, uh, you know, falling down and showing that thong. That's fine. That all looks great to me. But but it's something about when I when I see the girls actually wrestle. I mean, and, and I'm just speaking for me personally. If that that doesn't do. I mean, that does not excite me to see Lita do a her karana on a man. I mean, that's, you know. Uh, I mean, sure, it's a great athletic move, and it's it, it it some people may like it, but to me personally, that's not sexy. That's not uh, you know that's not provocative or anything to me. I mean, I, I would much rather see somebody like uh, Terry Runnels come to the ring uh, half naked and just and just stand there. <laughs> you know, that that to me is uh, is is more exciting than seeing a girl do a her karana or a moonsault or any of that stuff. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't make for a bad match. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And uh, one more thing, Lola. What do you think is going to be the, uh, you know, the the final result of this um, purchasing of WCW, you know, thing with uh, McMahon? Well, yeah, we we'll, we'll we'll the result. How are we know that? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, all I all I can do is tell you my own personal feelings. On yeah. Go on. Go on. I, 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 I can assure you that this, you know, me doing this interview is probably going to get big heat on me with the. With the with the WWF, I mean, uh, I could I could, uh, and maybe are, are we going to have another break and then another segment? Uh, we got one more br- we got one more break in just a second actually, yeah. Okay, well then during that break I'll go downstairs and I'll get my release. I want to read you guys a, a, a <laughs> paragraph of my release, but I I can just tell you that just me doing this interview is going to probably pretty much uh, close any doors on the chances of me coming back to WWF. They just apparently don't want me talking about anything to anybody, but but. Um, uh, I just, I just think that, I think that Vince having control of, of all of wrestling is, is he's Julius Caesar now. Well, yeah, and and yeah, I mean, you know, so of course this this is one of those things where you know, uh, uh, it's like a, a dog chasing a car. You know, uh-huh. what's he going to do when he catches it? And sure, it's been great to try this this long run, and it's the, it's uh, you know, Vince has been in this fight. And and it's almost like you know he's been slugging it out with the Ted Turner and with WCW for years and years, and bang, he finally scores the knockout. Well, I think that after that though, there's there's you know after that initial uh, euphoria, there's there comes a letdown, and and 
and I just think that not having any competition right. is not good for anybody. Right. Uh, you know, it's he's, got, he's, got nobody, he's got nobody to beat up. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, you can't be number one unless there's number two. Yeah. Now there's no number two, so Vince is not even number one. He's just wrestling now. And it's like, it's like, um, and, and, and once again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to preface this by saying this is not a knock on WWF. This is just something that, that, that happened because, you know, you, you, you are in competition with your, uh, with your opponents. And in this case, his opponent was WCW. And now Vince has won. But, but that's not necessarily going to be good for everybody because it's like, uh, you know, wrestlers especially. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no leverage. There's no bargaining power. There's nowhere else to go. You know, so, uh, let's, let's take what Vince gives us and like it. And, uh, but even, even for the WWF, for Vince, I, I just know how hard and how important it was for us every week and how, how hard we tried to beat the competition. And I know during the shows, you know, we would, we would have somebody would tell us whenever we were, they were in a break, you know, when WCW went to break and in our ear they'd say, okay, they're in break. And JR and I would know that during that time we would have to, uh, you know, because that's when the people clicked over. If they were watching Nitro and they went to commercial, boom, they came to Raw, and we were right there ready to reset what had happened. I mean, you know, we had to recap what had already gone on and tell everybody what was going to take place coming up on the show and try to make what was coming up sound so exciting that they wouldn't hit that clicker and go back to Nitro. Right. You know, we, 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 we made a concerted effort to do everything in our power to keep those people watching that WWF show. And now you don't have to do that anymore. There's not going to be anywhere they can click to. Where are they going to click to? Alan McBeal? I mean, you know, come on. So you don't have to have that. You don't have to walk that line. You don't have to have that edge. You, you well, have what do you, what do you get, think about the XPW? What's that? XPW. Um, yeah, they're an in, independent group in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, haven't like, even, I haven't even heard of it. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're like ECW, but even more, more far, far, to the, far to that level, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, blood, that's, you know blood and guts. That's the one of the I things so. that you know. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people talk about the ECW thing and 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 don't realize what a small world or what a small universe they existed in. I mean, there. I mean, that's another thing I realized from these emails. I get so many people. You know, the ECW show was never even on here in Memphis, Tennessee, and there are a lot of cities around the country that it was never even seen in. I'm getting so many emails from people saying, "Who is this guy, Paul Heyman?" You know, there are a lot of people that never really even heard of ECW. Just like I, I'm in, I'm in the wrestling business, and I've not even heard of this group you're talking about in Los Angeles. You know, unless you're, unless you're on, uh, uh, you know, like like Vince uh, or what WCW was, it's just a lot of people that have never heard of you out there. Right. To be in, to be really in it, um, I mean, to really be competition, you've got to be on uh, a big cable station with a good time slot. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. A couple of things before we go back to the phone calls. I um, wanted to ask you, we've had a few emails about this one, and this, been, this has kind of been one of those rumors that's been going around. What have you heard, if anything, about Jerry Jarrett trying to start something, and what are your thoughts, do you think it's possible, to start something on a, you know, to, to compete with Vince McMahon? Right. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I think that what, where that story got started, I think that what Jerry Jarrett was doing at the time was, um, not necessarily looking to start up something to compete with Vince McMahon. I think what Jerry Jarrett was doing was putting together a group of people uh, that were interested, like Eric Bischoff was, in purchasing the WCW. And that, that's where all of this came about. I, and, and, and what happened was when, uh, and, and, you know, he was quite serious about that, but then when, when all of a sudden the fact that uh, the four hours of TV time was pulled off the table, and then that's where... You know, the, that's where his interest in that all all went away. I mean, you know, because you know, what are you going to buy if you're buying WCW if you don't get that TV time? You're you're wasting your time, you know. Yeah. And that's. I, I mean, I don't. I don't think that Jerry's out there now looking to. Uh, at least I haven't heard that. I, I did hear that he was trying to, you know, be in the running to uh, to be one of the people to buy the WCW when it still uh, was going to be uh, buying the the you know the the Nitro show and the. Uh, and the Thunder Show. Do you think he could have turned it around if he would have got the TV and everything? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, so without a doubt, that could be turned around. That, I mean, that could have been turned around. I mean, uh, there's, there's no doubt in my mind at all. I mean, that, you know, I can, I can remember there was a there was a period of like 96 straight weeks when they beat when they beat the WWF. They beat us every single week, you know. And that, uh, um, what goes around comes around. It's no it's no doubt that that, that was just a sad case of mismanagement. Is what put that company out of business. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I don't know how close you were able to watch it because Monday nights you were working every Monday night, so you saw actually probably very little of Nitro for the last couple of years. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, you heard enough about it. I, I you know, as a fan, I've seen worse companies because they had no talent or people who didn't know what they were doing running it. But on a big level with real talent and, you know, in, in super television time, I don't think I ever saw such a, a, a comedy of disorganization of the, as the last three plus years exactly of and you you would really have to um you know you would really have to work hard <laughs> to to make the show that bad i i think um at times you're right <laughs> right that's what i mean and 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 i even think that you know maybe in the in the uh in the not too recent past that there were people uh intentionally making the show bad uh in order to drive the value of the company down and I think you know it, it worked against them in the long run, um, and you know because I think that maybe some people thought that if the uh, the the worse the company was financially, that uh, the lower the price would be for them to buy it. And it's interesting you should say that. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of people who've been in wrestling for a long time have have suggested that. Right. Um, and. I mean, and, and not not that like when it was going down, people weren't suggesting that from time to time too. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was. You know, the only thing is, I think that people, there were people who were working really hard. They just didn't know what they were doing. You know, trying to make it go. That's right, and and you know, I mean, when when you look at the history of WCW and you see uh, as it progressed along, you see when when you see people that didn't have. Uh, a wrestling, uh, you know, a pro wrestling background or a pro wrestling experience, uh, get in charge of things, you know, that's, that's when it all went south. It just, uh, the wrestling's a very, very unique business and, and that's why Vince has been so successful. I mean, you know, his grandfather was a wrestling promoter, his father was a wrestling promoter, he's a wrestling promoter. It's something that, that you have to know and true, you have to be able to change with the times and, and, and the, and the, the wrestling itself changes over the years and you have to you know you have to keep a young attitude and a young way of thinking uh but but the the intricacies of running the wrestling business don't change and you just can't throw somebody from the world of you can't throw an accountant in charge of a wrestling company and make it be successful there's so many there's so many other things in there that uh, that there are variables that have to be done that that somebody with this just because he's a good businessman uh, you know he he's not going to be able to do that. And one of the one of the main things in a wrestling company, and this is this is what Vince is the best at, or he's very very good at. And what WCW never really uh, once they got the you know the the business people in charge, what they were never able to do was create stars. I mean, you know they sure they had a good run when they bought some already established stars off, you know, from Vince. But once they once they rode those horses until they were no longer fresh. They weren't able to come up with anybody new. You know, they weren't able to create a star. And on the other hand, Vince McMahon took a WCW cast off, who they were just using in mid card, and made Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, creates this. You know, takes a guy like The Rock, who we had down here in Memphis as Flex Cabana, and makes him the you know the, the biggest star in the world. That and that's the difference. That's what WCW was never able to do. You know. And, and the other uh, thing is when they were on. The other thing when they were on top is. They thought it was going to last forever. I mean, they didn't realize that people, not even age, although that's right. part of it, but, but that, that, you know, everyone's got their run. Like if you, I mean, now you, you know, you were on top of Memphis for two decades, but you were cycling opponents in and out. If you were still fighting, like we talked about Randy Savage, you had a good run with Randy Savage for a little while. If you mm -hmm. fought Randy Savage for four straight years, by the fourth year, you wouldn't be drawing anything either. No, oh, absolutely not. You, you, that's what, that's what I mean. You have to, you know, you have to be, um, uh, aware enough to know that you've got to change with the times and you've got to change certain things. But there, there are certain things about the wrestling business that don't change, and that's where you're growing up in the business and your knowledge uh, uh, from, from uh, being in the business for so many years is invaluable. And, and, and uh, you know, just quite frankly, a guy like Eric Bischoff didn't have that knowledge, and a guy like Vince Russo sure, certainly didn't have that knowledge. Uh, not, that, not that they don't have, didn't have some good ideas about certain things, but uh, there's just you know, I mean, just one of the just one of the little little things that you need to know. And um, I touched on it earlier was the fact that you know I think that some of these guys in, down at WCW used to think, oh, we'll get all the big stars down here, and then when we'll have the market cornered, and we'll be we'll be number one forever. Well, that if you if you really know the wrestling business, that's one of the worst things you can have happen to you. You don't want all the big stars, and they had too many big stars at one time. 
and all of these massive egos and all of these uh, all of these massive contracts, and that's you know that's that's what wound up was costing them right out of business. You know, you just can't. Uh, you, there needs to be a pecking order, so to speak, in in uh, in a company. Well, the one thing is, is now is, is WWF does have all the big stars, right? Just about because the guys who are the big stars. Because it's either the big stars or guys that aren't on television. Because there are big stars that aren't in the WWF, but no one sees them because there's no outlets to see them. Exactly. And you know, and, 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 and what's going to happen here in the future is very, very interesting uh, to to try to figure out what's going to happen. Because don't think for one minute that that The Rock and that Steve Austin and that The Undertaker and that Kurt Angle and that Triple H don't think for one minute that these guys don't realize. That boy, once we're uh, once we're out of the picture here, we're out of the business. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so they're going to be doing everything in their power to stay uh, in the spot that they're in. They're not going to want anybody to take their place. They're not going to help anybody come along to uh, to overshadow them. You know, and 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 now all of a sudden you're going to have this influx of uh, the WCW talent. They're all going to be wanting to get in that top spot. And and you know, this is this this is one of the things that you had in the WCW. You know, you you had a bunch of guys that were big contract guys and big name stars, and they didn't ever want to step aside and let anybody else new come in. And, and, that, and now that's it's, it's even going to be more so now in the WWF because, you know, you step aside now, you step out of the business. It's going to be survival of the most clever people. Right. Um, but Brian, I think you and I know who that is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and in fact, when you look at it, with the way the contracts are structured, I mean, even stepping down from the main event to semi-main event, you're losing money right there. Oh, without a doubt, sure. And believe me, I, I can assure you there'll be some restructuring of contracts after this deal goes through. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let, uh, oh, real quick, is, is there something, do you want to read that thing to us? or? You know what, honest to goodness, I, I left during the commercial break, I went downstairs, and I, I probably shouldn't even say this, but I let an attorney take it to home with him. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Well, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not just not going to, uh, you know, uh, sign my life away here. I want to let somebody that knows more about this kind of stuff read this thing, uh, and that's, that's basically what it's for, you know. Okay. Let's go to Angela in Connecticut. Angela, what's up? Yes, hi. Um, I have a question. Are you playing for any kind of lawsuit? Well, no, I mean, not, not at this time. I don't, you know, I don't... Uh, uh, I don't guess I really have anything to sue anybody over as long as I get, you know, I, I, I certainly still have uh, some money coming, some royalties coming, and, and that sort of thing from the st work that I've done in the past for the WWF. And as long as, uh, you know, as long as that uh, shows up, I guess that everything will be cool there, you know, as does, as does Stacy. Uh, so, um, you know, I guess you can get, I guess you can get fired for pretty much, uh, uh, anything so uh, true, but the way that you guys was released all of a sudden and they lied, don't you feel like what they did to Bret Hart and some of the other wrestlers that was there at the time? They do well, the same I mean, thing you, to you know, you? it's it's that, that that's just that's just one of the things of the wrestling because I mean I have I've had so many emails comparing our situation to Bret Hart. People saying you know look at Vince screwed Bret and then now he screwed you guys and. Uh, our, our situation is very, very different in the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of people say that Vince screwed Brett. I still, I still don't know the truth of what happened on that situation. But mm, how can you I say do. that Brett really got screwed <laughs> when he went to a company and started making two million dollars a year? And that's true too. You know, but but in our case, we, we lost the job and now we're we're truly unemployed with no income whatsoever. We don't have any place else to go to. So there's a, there's a little bit of difference there, you know. Okay. Let's go to Jeff in, L Jeff in L.A. You're going to be the last caller. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you? Fine. How are you doing, Jerry? Hi. Hi. I go way back with you, too. I forget which magazine you were doing the artwork with. Oh, my God. The Patriot. The Patriot. And, uh, oh, what was that guy's name? Wrestling News. Yeah. Uh, A wrestling uh, review or something? Right. Wrestling Review? Wrestling Monthly. Wrestling Monthly. Was it Wrestling Monthly? Cool. Norm, Norm yeah. Kaiser was the guy that uh, right. put that magazine out. You bet. Wow, so I go back to that and... I enjoyed the uh, the match last summer with the with the candy jar with Jr. and that was a lot of fun. But I have you know, to I, say, I mean, it was it was something where I I, I of course always enjoy uh, you know getting in the ring and wrestling still and 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 every now and then I got to have some kind of pretty much like a little gimmick match or whatever there in the WWF. They never I never really felt like and of course it was difficult to to step right from the uh, the announce table and get right into the ring and start wrestling and then go right back to the announce table and. And uh, I think they always valued my 
commentary skills more so than my wrestling skills. But, you know, I, I still really enjoy wrestling and, and uh, have actually lost about 35 pounds and I'm probably in the best shape of my life as far as that goes. And I, and I, I still enjoy doing that and, and uh, uh, was looking forward to get to do a little bit more of that up there. But it looks like now I'll be doing most of my wrestling in, here in Memphis and uh, on the independent circuit. Okay. Uh, really, before before we go, I, I got to get that one answer. What, what would you say was your favorite and your least favorite opponent in your run in Memphis? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, I always enjoyed working with Bill Dundee. We, you know, we had we had the, probably the longest run where we wrestled each other more than anybody. Uh, had some. I enjoyed working with Terry Funk. That was always a lot of fun. We had some matches. Um, as far as my least favorite, oh man. <laughs> I don't even. I don't know. I, I I've never really. I don't really remember anybody that just could say, "Oh my gosh, I hate to work with this guy." Uh, how, how was How was Leon Stinks? Because you were the only one ever to have a good. I would say good match, but you were the only one ever to have a match with Leon Stinks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Leon Stinks was uh, Leon Stinks. I was such a big fan. I mean, it was like it was like so much fun for me to do that. Uh, to get to be. Uh, all I could think of was, you know, I'm I'm in the same ring with a guy that beat Muhammad Ali. It was it was like a thrill of my life, you know. I mean, it was a lot of fun, and and of course, you know, it was way at the end of Leon Spink's career, and he was, uh, I was looking at him, and his and his wife Betty was here, and and you know, he was like it was almost like a caricature of himself. He was so cool, would talk with the teeth out. He wanted me to take him to a Kentucky Fried Chicken place, and it, it was it was just it was a, it was a lot of fun, you know. We're totally out of time, Jerry. I want to thank you very much for doing the show, and best of luck, and uh, however this business turns out, and however. He, Wherever you wind up, it's a very, very <laughs> so, interesting you know time. And I'm sure you guys, you guys check it often and and, and take uh, take news off there. But I'm I'm going to put a, a new update on my website, uh, kingauto.com, uh, <laughs> pretty soon, and and try to keep everybody updated with uh, you know what's going on with Stacy and I through that, and 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 let everybody know where we're going to be and and that sort of thing. Cool. Okay. Best of luck, Jerry, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow at five with Brock Lesnar.